Okay, guys, here we go. Episode three of the P Company series. This one is going to be a good one. Let's get into it. So for me, P Company is important because it separates us, first of all, from every infantry regiment in the British Army. Definitely agree with that bit there, guys. If you're cutting about with a maroon lid or even a green lid if you're part of the Royal Marines and you go into different camps, people recognise it straight away. People look at you with a certain sort of respect um, and you are sort of a little bit ahead of them people. You're, you're held to a higher standard um, than other regiments within the British Army. People expect you to be on the ball if you're cutting around with a maroon lid and your pair of wings on your arm. And likewise, if you have a dagger and, and, a, and a green lid, people expect that little bit extra from you and expect you to be all over your skills and drills, expect you to be working at a high standard um, and all them sorts of things. So it is a really good accolade to have, even if you're not planning on going parachute regiment or any other airborne unit, if you want to go and do P company, which you can, um, it's definitely a good accolade to have on your sort of resume um, as part of uh, the British Army. Um, it's, it's not just a test of your physical robustness, it's a mental test as well. Um, we say all the time to our recruits, if you are in control of your minds, you can accomplish anything, not just with P Company, but just in life in general. Uh, That's a really good point there, guys. Um, a lot of people struggle with P Company Test Week because of the mental aspect of it, or they get injured um, due to the, the, the beat up that they have gone through to get to that point. Most people are fit enough physically to pass the test week when they get there. Now, the, the beat up, whether you go through depot or whether you go through all arms, is quite um, difficult because you're doing a lot of physical activity and it takes its toll on your body. And by the time you get to test week, you're just beaten up and it's a matter of just sort of hanging on mentally and pushing through. You've got the ability, but it's can your body take it and can your mind take it? So I 100% agree with what that guy has said there. Um, for me though, the, the biggest importance about P Company is the fact that you know when you're in battalion, on exercise, growing up with your mates and you know potentially on operations, you know full well that the people next to you left and right have gone through the same thing, they've been through that same pain barrier, they've gritted their teeth, they've pulled horrendous faces um, and they've just proven that they're part of something much bigger. Here we go, episode three. Gonna be a good one. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Fine, press up to eight, look. This looks like a warm up before an activity or an event, as they call it. Um, the the warm ups are normally pretty difficult. I think I spoke about this in one of the other episodes. Um, the warm ups get you blowing a little bit, as as they're supposed to. They're supposed to have a pulse razor in there, but obviously, like I just talked about before, you're already pretty beaten up. So by the time you've walked to the back area and you've done these warm ups, you've exerted quite a bit of energy already, and then you've got to go on to do the event, whatever the event may be. Um, it can be quite difficult, and it can tire out quite a lot. After completing the log race this morning, they must now tackle the steeplechase. This is an individual best effort test. Joe is against the clock. It's a two mile cross country course featuring a number of water obstacles. They must complete the cross country element first and then negotiate an assault course. The event needs to be completed in under 19 minutes to score 10 points. <laughs> Mm, that's strange. I thought it was always 18 minutes um, back when I did it. Uh, and this event, to be honest, guys, is probably one of the easier events, especially if you're a decent runner. Um, it's, like they said, an obstacle course, um, and it's through the backwoods, um, quite next to the top back area sort of thing in um, in Vimy Barracks. And it's, uh, it's one of the easier events, like I said. Uh, you shouldn't really struggle on this one too much unless you have issues with one of the obstacles. Now, I believe you do this as part of your prac if you're going into the parachute regiment and you want to go into depot. Um, I believe you do this as part of prac on that little three-day course that you do uh, to see if you you hit the standards to go there. Um, so you get a little eyes on on this um, when you go through that. Um, but like I said, not many people struggle with this event. It's not one of the ones where people fail, um, in my opinion, and from what I've seen, from my experiences. Um, so 
when you come into this one, there's no real worries really, unless you struggle with one of the obstacles. Amazing how much heavier your kit and equipment gets when it gets soaking wet and pitted in mud. The boots get probably twice, three times as heavy maybe. You've also got the helmet on, which is always annoying. And uh, obviously your trousers and that start to get wet. They start to come down a little bit. And you, maybe your belt gets a little bit loose. Um, and mobility starts to get restricted a little bit. And you've got to get through mud, obstacles and stuff like that. That's the only things that really slow you down. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's a good event. It's fun. So they normally come and stand in a line here and um, what normally happens on P Company now, don't take this as gospel, is the individual events, so things like this, the, the two miler, so you've got the steeplechase, the two miler, um, the millen, if you normally win them and you do well on the other events as well, you stay on all the other events and you win all these individual ones as well, you've got a real good shot at getting P Company champion. Now, they'll probably talk about P Company champion towards the end episode uh, and it's basically an award given to who they think was the best recruit on the P Company test week and it normally goes to the person that, like I said, has won every single individual event and, and done well on the team events like the log race and stuff like that. Number 11, Private Tidy, has done well on this event and scored maximum points. Despite coming off the log, it's all still painful. Point to note there guys, when you stood there, like that there, they want you to stand up straight, there's no like putting your hands on your on your knees, bending over and feeling sorry for yourself. You stand there and you stand, I think they stood at ease there, um, and you look forward, you don't sort of start whinging on and start crying about being tired and stuff like that. You just stand straight. You don't even talk or anything, it's that rigid. Um, it's quite good, it's, uh, it's a difficult environment to be in. But if you know you've done well, it's all, it's all good, isn't it? It's all good. I literally thought that guy's name there was Goggins, as in David Goggins, the Navy SEAL. Sir! Number 15, sir! Number 13, sir! Number 11, sir! Number 13, sir! Here yeah, we just complete the steeple chair, sir. Short, fast, hard event. I uh, came in a good position, so I'm quite happy with that. Yeah, it went well. I've always found the stupid chase quite hard, but managed to get a good result in it. Oh, good. Like I said before, most people are at a really good standard, especially running by this time. I think when you do it on in depot, I don't know, someone correct me if I'm wrong, but it's around week 23, something like that, maybe week 25 or something. Um, so by this point, you've already done months of training getting smashed into the ground by the the power reg instructors um so these guys would be absolutely rapid in terms of running so none of them really should have any problems at all passing the steeplechase because they'll have been doing miles upon miles throughout their training um so the, they'll all be well prepared for this like i said before it'll just be injuries that'll be annoying people now and sort of pushing through mentally so we just finished the uh, steeplechase, which is a uh, best effort event, uh, solo effort. Uh, so we do the steeplechase simulate, get into the battle. Um, so it's two miles under undulating ground with like water obstacles and it's best effort. All right, it was a bit harder having niggles, but I dug deep, got a mention off the P Company staff, which was nice for a good effort. So feeling good after it. Yeah, I was particularly, particularly impressed there. Obviously participating in the steeplechase myself, but there was someone there right, right up one. Nice. 
uh, considering where, where they are now in the course, they're feeling tired, they're feeling sore. It's an impressive still performance from, from Joe. There will be a few that are disappointed. Again, that's the, that's the nature of the beast. Today's events are done for today. We had the log race in the morning, and then we had the steel chase this afternoon. Um, managed to stay on the log, got through the steeple chase. Uh, just doing a bit of recovery now with the PTIs, ready for the two mile in the morning. It's nice to see the, the young lads sort of doing a bit of recovery and stuff like that. Um, and the army in itself is sort of being a bit more scientific about their reports of doing things. Um, instead of just smashing people through things, they're, they're sort of starting to see that doing that is just getting people injured and people won't be able to get into the units that they want to get them in. So it's quite good. The Royal Marines are, are, are quite good at doing stuff like this. They're very sort of calculated about their training and their recovery and stuff like that. It's nice to see the Power Ridge um, obviously doing the same thing because they are sort of the same sort of tier in, in terms of um, organisations. It's quite good. Yeah, it was a good day. Came in with the winning log on the, on the log race and then came third on the steeplechase. So I'm happy with that and uh, just stretching off now making sure I get some good recovery. So Friday we got the two miler in the morning, which got to be done in 18 minutes with 37 rounds. Now the two miler guys, what I did on my course is you normally run out there with the PTI um, and it's up a sort of slight incline. I don't know if it's going to have changed. Um, a slight incline, you set off as a squad. Um, obviously not everyone keeps with the PTI as, as you can imagine. Um, and then when you get to the top, you get set off sort of best effort. So I'll be interested to see if they do that again here. Um, and it's still sort of following the same suit. The two miler is another benchmark test for airborne forces and is regularly undertaken on exercise and operations at platoon and company level. Represent that rapid movement to either counter an enemy or, or seize the initiative away, away from the enemy. So they're carrying 37 pounds, they're going two miles and they've got 18 minutes to do so. Right, Joe, just remember what you were told, right? The only way we carry this weapon in one arm is when we carry it between the pistol grip and the magazine house in. Exactly like the chief instructor told you on the brief. Everyone happy? Yes, sir. Yes, I don't want to see any other carriage of this weapon unless it's in two hands. So two hands, like so, or between the pistol grip and the magazine housing. Everyone happy? Yes, yes sir. It's a scary block right there. Scary, scary block. Let's see how many stay with the PTI by the time they get to the turnaround point, the mile point. Number 20, Private Duncan, one of the youngest recruits, has put in another strong performance, finishing in the top five for both the steeplechase and the two-miler. Right, good effort to those that finished with a the pack there. <laughs> Number 20, sir! Number 20 up the front again, 15, killing it. Sir. What you want to see? I think the hardest thing about the two miler is just trying to keep the legs moving and um, obviously carrying a little bit of weight on your back so you've got to keep on shuffling if you, if you start walking on the two miler it's going to be quite tough to get in under that 18 minute mark um so you've just got to keep on shuffling keep your knees nice and low at the ground and just sort of shuffle the feet tiny bits off the floor and just keep on moving as fast as you possibly can um, and pump them arms and use momentum um with the rifle uh, and, and obviously the the free arm it's a lot harder with the rifle and the helmet on, by the way, than it is without. Um, obviously, you've seen the staff members doing it without, so it is a little bit easier for them. Number three, stop! Number 16, sir! Number one, sir! The crew's 
have uh, just completed their two mile uh, loaded march. Um, the recruits here have done reasonably well. We'd like to see a little bit of a strong performance, but um, a, a lot of them have scored. Again, this just will go to their overall performance throughout the whole peak coming, I um, hopefully resulting in a pass, especially for the ones we've invested in. I'd be curious to know what the actual pass mark is for, for the points, because um, I've never been told that before, so that'd be quite interesting to know if anyone knows that. The last uh, event or the first week of P Company, the two miler, um, it's got to be it's like a squatted effort, I and mean, then yeah, got to bring it in about 18 minutes, which is under. Uh, I think it went reasonably well, finished just out of the top, the top five, I think about seven or eight. So I'm reasonably happy with that. I came in with the pack at the end, so. We'll pack in the last stretch. We're going to plan for the weekend. We're going to go out for a big scoff on Saturday. We might even get booked in for the banner time, try and get to the spa bits to try and relax a bit. Uh, just a lot of recovery and eating. Uh, so we've just completed the two miler, which uh, brings the end of the third day. Quick day. So, for people that have asked me this in the past, as you can see there, they do get the weekend off. Um, I was unsure um, if the depot lads did get it because they are going through basic training, whereas the all arms uh, course are already sort of trained soldiers. They've already passed phase one and phase two, um, and you get a weekend off there. I was a bit unsure if the, the Reg lads would get um, the weekend off, but it seems like they do, which is good. So you get that extra bit of recovery, and then obviously you can go into the last two days of P Company, Monday and Tuesday, and hopefully finish strong. And now we've got a weekend to West recover, get ready for the quick mile on Monday. Yeah, I, did, uh, I think I did very well on the two mile. It's a event I'm pretty confident with, I usually do well on. And, uh, uh, was one of two people who stuck with the PTI the entire time, so yeah, I was happy with that. For the weekend, I'm just gonna recover, stretch off, get some ice baths on, just make sure I'm fresh for, for Monday for the two, uh, 20 mile. The big 20 mile lap. Okay, so what type of people are we looking for in the Polish Regiment? Um, motivated. So guys, for people that don't know where that little sort of subway thing is there, um, there's two camps in Catrick. You've got two infantry camps, and I believe, someone can correct me um, on this if I'm wrong, I believe the Gurkhas and the Power Ridge lads stay in Heli's barracks, and then the rest of the infantry regiments are in the top barracks, uh, which is Vimy barracks. Now, that might be wrong, um, but there's a subway that connects them because there's a road in between them both. Um, so. Once you're on P Company Test Week, you normally parade at P Company lines on a morning and then you would march up through the subway all the way to the back of Vimy, up all the, the hills and all that sort of stuff. And then you would start your event from up there. It's probably a good mile um, before you even get to the start point. So as you can imagine, when you're carrying weight and stuff like that, you start at P, uh, P Company lines and you've got to walk all the way up to Vimy. You're already putting a couple of miles on your legs just by sort of getting to the start point. Um, and like you can see here, they make you sometimes run between them to get um, to get there a little bit quicker. Dedicated, disciplined, and then the courage to fight when all else is out the window and the enemy's staring down at you, and then rounds are coming back at you. You need to be able to get your head up and have a fight, ready to go toe to toe with the enemy. And that's what we're looking for. That's the people that we want. We don't really care about who you were beforehand, what you've done, how you've done it, what school you went to. It all goes out the window when you get to us. When your body's screaming at you saying stop, your mind's screaming at you saying stop, there's a little thing. It's hard to explain, to be honest with you, but there's that little voice that just comes into your mind and it drags you to the end. If you've got that, then you'll probably welcome you into the parachute legend. Okay, guys, that is going to be it for episode three. I believe there is one episode left and we're going to do that one very very shortly if you did like this one then please give it a like and subscribe and thank you so much for all the support on the previous video catch you in the next episode